In this video, we'll be looking at the Schneider 25mm f1.4 Cine Xenon C-mount lens. Pictured is my C-mount copy of this lens. I believe this lens originates from the 60s and it came in C-mount, C-mount for Bolex, and Airy standard mount. There's a Xenon line that is not Cine, and there's also a 25mm f1.5 Xenon that may be a different lens. As you can see, this lens was developed for 16mm, had a price of $134.50 in what I assume is the late 60s. Putting that number into an inflation calculator gets us about $1,000 in today's dollars, but I feel like it would sell for higher. And you can see from the lens diagram that it has seven elements in four groups. So let's talk about image quality. This photo was taken with my Nikon V1 camera and its one inch sensor. Wide open, this lens is sharp in the central portion. I'm not used to lenses from this era being this sharp wide open. Again wide open on the V1, there is distinctive non-round bokeh that has a swirly fill. I imagine people will love it or hate it. Despite its sharpness, it still has that vintage goodness to the image. As you can see, it covers the whole sensor on the V1. Unfortunately, on micro four thirds, there is significant vignetting. Some photos you can almost get away with it, but it's too much for my liking. Here are two more photos shot on the Panasonic G85 Micro Four Thirds camera that exhibit the bokeh this lens produces wide open. I did not like this lens for landscape use because the fall off of sharpness was obvious towards the edges. This lens did better medium to close distances and in portraiture. In this video, the lens is stopped down and everything is nice and sharp. Because I'm shooting with the Panasonic G85 in 4K mode, there's approximately a 2.2 times crop, which solves the vignetting issue we saw when taking a picture with the full micro four thirds sensor. Shooting wide open for video, this clip will give you a fill for the bokeh. I was having trouble tracking focus on this shot. C-mount lenses, given their smaller size, can always be a bit more finicky to work with. You can see the distinctive fill of the bokeh. It's definitely not meant for every shot, but it has its place when you're going for a specific kind of look. There is one ergonomic issue with this lens I want to point out. Because the aperture ring adjustment is so close to the base of the lens where you screw it into the camera, when you use it with an adapter, like an adapter to Micro Four Thirds or an adapter to Mic Nikon One, the aperture ring is recessed so far in that adapter you will not be able to access it. This may not be a problem if you're just shooting wide open or you stop it down once and leave it there, but you are losing the ability to adjust the aperture on the fly easily. And this concludes this video. Thank you for watching.